inflection versus derivation. We have gone through the difference between the two types of morphology. Right? Let's focus uh, on the two once more. Within a lexeme based theory, derivation gives new lexemes and inflection gives you the form of lexeme that are determined by a syntactic environment. So, we have just gone through that how the environment determines that which form of the word or lexeme has to be used and which is not possible. What exactly does this mean, uh, right? And is there really need for such a distinction? Do we need to make a distinction between uh, this uh, syntactic role of the, the inflectional morphology and obviously the derivations? The first question about the distinction is whether there is any formal basis for distinguishing the two types of morphology, the inflectional as well as uh, derivational morphology. Can we tell them apart because they do different thing in words? So, this is the question. Obviously, we have gone through that and we have seen that they have different rules in language. So, let's look at some of the distinctive points or features between inflectional and derivational morphologies. Inflection does not change the core lexical meaning or the lexical category of the word to which it applies. So, this first thing is does not change the core lexical meaning. The meaning of the lexeme remain the same. If you add as to a verb play, the play uh, an activity, right, will remain the same. Derivation does the former and may do the later. What derivation does is that it changes the meaning and it may change the grammatical categories. Generally, it does, right? So, generally, it does change the grammatical category of the word. However, in some cases, it does not change. For example, if we have a noun king and we make kingdom, it remains the same noun, right? So, there are certain instances in which it does not change the category. However, it change, changes the meaning. Inflection is the realization of morphosyntactic feature, right? It tells that which uh, syntactic role the word will play. Those that are relevant to the syntax, such as case and number. Derivation has no case or no number. Inflectional morphology is more productive than derivational morphology. With the help of inflection morphology, we can get different types of words, right? So, derivational morphology has lesser role in this regard. Derivational morphology tends to occur closer to root or stem than inflectional morphology. For example, if we have the word teach and we add er, teacher, so er, the derivational affix remains with the uh, root. And if we add teachers, so the S inflectional comes after it. Derived lexemes are more likely to be stored in the lexicon than inflected forms. So, obviously, since they are few in numbers, inflected forms are not stored. Whereas, whenever we come across a new word, we make it or we borrow it from any other language, we add it to the lexicon. Despite the generalizations made above, the morphological form that inflection and derivation may take is very similar, right? Both help us in, deter in enhancing the use of language. Cross-linguistically, both can be expressed through prefix, suffix or non-segmental means. So, we have gone through where there is no segment or fix is added to the word and we change the grammatical category of the word and give it a new meaning to a lexeme. The difference between inflection and derivation is therefore not so much a difference in form and a difference in function, what they do and what they tell us, right? So, the, actually the difference, what, how they function 
in the sentence that is of more importance.